It's so funny. Have you ever seen it, Tyson? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you're, you're giving me this look like, what the fuck is this? I think, is she a therapist? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Are you um, sure it's not Barbara no, Streisand? I thought he, no, he's a therapist. Um, Bette Midler. Yeah. It's, it's not Barbara yeah. Streisand? No, no, no. It's no, no. Bette Midler. Okay. Yeah. Um, is this, you are the wind. Yeah. <laughs> Tie back. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen in our archives for that one, um, and then then I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna say one crazy summer, which I have been yes. watching one crazy summer yes. um, this summer so far a lot. I've watched it like three or four times really? in the last month. That's another um, cult kind of under kind of hit. Bobcat Goldthwait. Um, it was a it was a Savage Steve Holland movie, yeah. which with his first Better one, Off he did, Dead. Better Off Dead, and then he did this one, which and is it, I, love. I love the little art excerpts. Mm-hmm. Um, in the yeah, yeah the cute and fuzzy the bunnies movie. yeah the yeah. cute and fuzzy bunnies Bobcat's like one of my favorites in that movie too because he was just so funny in it the 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 Egg Brothers or whatnot I think they're the Egg Brothers uh, yeah I don't something. remember and I've I've seen it three times the last month I've seen it like fucking Stork Brothers Stork Brothers there there is a, damn yeah. I mean I watched that movie a lot yeah, yeah. when I was young Wait, I, I recorded it not too long ago um, on the DVR and I've been watching it because whenever there's nothing else on I'm like yep I'm gonna watch it. And it for sure, the guy the guy that's trying to win the radio contest yeah. that has got to be part of my that's one of my favorite yeah, parts yeah. for sure. And at the very end of it, he finally wins <laughs> after all the summers. He finally fucking wins, and then he rips the phone out of the fucking wall, so he couldn't give Aww. his information. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh well, I guess we're gonna move on. Rich Little's in the fucking booth and shit. <laughs> Fuck that movie is that movie is hilarious for sure all the way through. Hoops. <laughs> Fair enough. Back to 87. Sure. Um, I'm going to go... I've got some bigger movies on here, but I want to talk about a couple sequels that came out. Uh, Evil Dead 2 came out, which... I love. Yes. I mean, it's Evil Dead with a budget. Yes. Basically. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, there's not much of a story change <laughs> no, there. No. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say that out of the fir- the three, the trilogy, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and Army of Darkness, Evil Dead 2 is probably my favorite. And, and again, yeah. I think that's that's probably common. Yep. Um, a, a common theme. Common, yeah. yeah I mean, well, don't get me wrong. I love Army of Darkness. As do I. But I, I think that that's the Evil movie Dead. that really, like. Again, because Evil Dead was such a low budget movie mm-hmm. that I think the Evil Dead Two was the one where it kind of caught on. Yeah, you know, yeah, because they can continue it, the story. It's essentially the same story. It's pretty much the exact yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. surviving that, <laughs> yeah, you he's survived there again. He's in the cabin with a bunch of strangers, the and next he totally night. forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, but great movie. Yeah, um, Bruce I, Campbell. I love yeah. Bruce Campbell. Um, Who doesn't? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here if you don't. If you don't like Bruce Campbell, fuck off. (laughs) Um, Shut it off now. Shout out to Bruce Campbell. Yeah, yeah. Friend of the show. Hopefully a friend of the show. Bruce Uh, Campbell. If he's not, he will be after the show. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Beverly Hills Cop 2. Nice. That was a good Um, one, too. Great movie. Ronnie Cox dying at the very beginning. Oh. Did I Spoiler just ruin alert. It? <laughs> you gotta say it before you spray it, bro. Spoiler alert. Shaka bro. Um, like Taggart and fucking yeah, yeah. Rosewood. Absolutely. Just just a great movie. Um, but again, just staying with the sequels. Um, and this one's not so great in my opinion. Um, but I felt like I had to put it on here and it was Teen Wolf 2. Oh, oh my. T-O-O. Teen I, Wolf <laughs> Jason two. Bateman. I watched it not too long ago. Horrible fucking movie. I know, it's terrible. So bad. But um, well, we're starting to get in that age of, if it's a hit, give me a sequel. sequel absolutely. Yeah. Well, the first one came out in what, um, 80, 84? I want to say 84, 85. Something like that, yeah. So it wasn't too long afterwards, and it was... Fuck They're it. like, we want another one. And Michael J. Fox is like, well, I don't know. I don't think I can do that. <laughs> They're like, get me Jason Bateman. Yeah. He's he's hot. Who's hot right now? Yeah. Didn't they he's play on the... Teen Magazine. Well, weren't they on the same TV Tiger show? Beat. No, uh, no, no, no. His sister was okay. Yeah. Justine yeah. Bateman, yeah. who did that rock girl band movie. What yeah, was with that? Uh, oh, um, Jesus Christ, Josie and Joan the Pussy- Jett, um, Josie and the Pussycats. No, she the Runaways. Did. No, run, um, no, Michael gem, J. Fox. Gem in the glitter or something. <laughs> no, Michael J. Fox did the one with Joan Jett. Yes, Justin Bateman wasn't in that one. I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> we're in the time where we're getting. Uh, you want a hit? Shit in. You want a hit? <laughs> you got a hit? Give me a sequel. Yeah. And, and 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 I'm going to segue from what you said because we got Judge Reinhold and Evil Dead came out in 1982, right at the end of the year, right yeah. at the end of the year in a limited release. So technically it. It fucking counts. Yep. Evil Dead 
And if it wasn't for Evil Dead, you wouldn't have Evil Dead 2. Nope. So 1982, nope. bitches. But <laughs> Evil Dead's coming out in 1982. John Dreinhold is also in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. yep. That's a great movie. Good yeah. call classic. Good real... Dated. It is a little dated. Dated. Because of the some of the themes might not be PC, I guess, for a lot of people nowadays. But it's real. Yeah, the and mall. It's, Sure, <laughs> and it's directed by um, yeah. It's a woman. This yeah, yeah, chick. yeah. Um, she she did. She ended up doing a lot of really good movies too. Um, there was a there that was a big cast too. Mick uh, Damone. Yeah, uh, it had uh, Forrest Whitaker in it. Sean Penn. Uh, Sean Penn. Sean Penn. That's yeah. kind of started his, a, a big part of his career. It, absolutely. Um, and um, who was the teacher? The older guy. He was funny. He's been in a lot of stuff. Um. God, there's Ray uh, Walston. Yeah, there's a lot. Amy, of... Amy, it was uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High was directed by Amy Heckerling. Yep, she would go on to direct Clueless and other things. Yep. Um, but so in this year, you know, with Judge Reinhold, you got Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That's a good hit. Absolutely. That's a big one that a lot of people really like. You got The Evil Dead, 1982, right on the cusp of the year, tying back into the year 1987 with um, Evil Dead Two. But this year, you also have Rocky Three, and Rocky Three is going to be the first one that gives you. Hulk Hogan? No. Club oh, Lion? yeah. Well, yeah. It gives you That's the first one that gives you <laughs> yeah, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. But what I'm thinking is Club. The Eye of the Tiger. Ooh. Oh, yeah. 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 So that's going to be in the popular zeitgeist. Yep. It's not, always going to be. Not my favorite Survivor song for a Rocky movie. <laughs> what? Oh. oh. What? What was, it? what was it? In the Burning Heart from Rocky IV, <laughs> yes. son. Let's 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 go back to 1987 here real quick oh, for you. And what were you going to say? Oh, no. I was... Uh, I was <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> when Teen Wolf Two, what was the uh, answer? No, all I was going to say was that Justine Bateman. The movie was called Satisfaction, and you know who was the club owner in that movie? Liam Neeson. Oh, dang! dang. Yeah, he was also in um, Darkman. No, the Deadpool. Oh, with um, Jim Carrey. Yeah, and yeah, Clint yeah. Eastwood. Yeah, it was a, it was a Dirty Harry movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's weird. Well, he was also on um, what was that? Kroll. <laughs> Liam Neeson was in Crawl. Yeah, he was in Crawl. Oh with shit! Robbie Coltrane. What? I would much so prefer to see Crawl. I just yeah, had to yeah. look it up because I'm like that movie was called Satisfaction. Oh I yeah, yeah. Because Justin that, Bateman. I remember the Joan Jett movie instead, right? Because different. You want to different? Want to go different hmm? Batemans and yeah. You want to go that way now? <laughs> oh yeah, I don't care. Um, go back to 1987. So if we're going back to 87, I'm going to throw out a couple of directorial debuts here. Um, Chris Columbus. Uh, he directed a little movie called Adventure in Babysitting. Um, Nice, funny movie. Uh, it's also like shoot. a cult, cla- kind of like yeah. a, kind of a, a, a lot of people know it, but not everyone. Vincent D'Onofrio as Thor. Oh, oh yes. that's right. <laughs> um, that, was that him? That was him. He mm-hmm. also Good was way. in Full Metal Jacket that year. Exactly. Yeah, Dang. he gained a. He held the record for gaining the most weight for a role for a long time. Yeah, Dang. absolutely. He, bro- I think he broke the record that De Niro held for, for Raging Bull. For Raging, Raging Bull. Bull. Huh. Nice um, little fun fact. Yeah, yeah. nice little fun fact <laughs> for you. <laughs> Fun fact finders out there in Funland. <laughs> but you you would know Chris Columbus, obviously. Home Alone, the Harry Potter movies, yep. Percy first, Jackson. Yeah, the first yep. two. And then uh, another little guy, you guys might have heard of this fella, Peter Jackson, uh, did a, a little horror movie called Bad Taste. Um, this is one I haven't seen. Yeah, it, tell us about Bad Taste. So Dan. Bad Taste is about uh, some aliens that come down and... Uh, <laughs> Basically, are trying to harvest human beings for a fast fo- intergalactic fast food chain. Original idea. It, it definitely an original <laughs> idea. And is it is it puppets? Oh no, um, <laughs> it, it's the craziest thing you've ever seen in your Dang. life. It's worth watching just to watch it. Is it makeup? Um, are they in makeup? The aliens? they're mostly in human outfits the whole time. Oh, okay. So you don't really they see... take the place of the no. They they are. They have uh, costumes, and I just remember there was actually um, you could buy the video cassette, and they had to change the front. Because the aliens like flipping you off. Oh yeah. yeah, and they had to change it to the peace side <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, the aliens are—I don't know—they're costumed. Mm, um, cool. But uh, yeah, the the rocket launcher uh, scene with the sheep, well <laughs> worth watching it. Um, but Peter Jackson, yeah, kind of a big deal, debut. as we uh, know. Yeah, you know, Lord of the Rings, yeah. all that jazz. Frighteners, uh, yes. King Kong, as we know, he's he's gone on to. Big things. Yeah, he's done a couple things that you might have heard of. Yeah, probably still going to break the game again. Um, another directorial debut, and I'm not going to talk much about this movie, but Danny DeVito actually directed a movie, his first movie, Throw Mama from the Train. Oh, with I love that movie, and dude. And Billy Crystal. Yep. It's a funny movie. It's, um, you know uh, that movie Shot, the cinematographer? 
hmm. is Barry Sonnenfeld. Really? So he is uh, another director that yeah. you know, you know. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, he I also did the shot... research for 1987, and I didn't know that. <laughs> he also shot the Coen Brothers' first movie, <laughs> Blood Simple, but that was from '84. All right, all right. But the but Raising Arizona was a Coen Brothers yeah, movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's, I, let's... he might have. Sh- Barry Sonnenfeld might have shot Raising Arizona as well. The really? Cinema. So he shot those movies and a couple other ones before he would go on to make Adam's Family. Okay. But Danny DeVito made Matilda, too. That's a kick-ass yeah. movie. And Matilda is a good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Now, I'm going to shift gears a little bit here uh, on one, and I'm going to go down to Short Circuit. 1986. Oh, Short <laughs> Circuit. Yes. It, that's, it's the Goot. <laughs> Tell us the, about the Gutenberg, Brock. The, the Goot. I mean... He was he he's my king of the eighties. Cool. I don't know if he's yours, but he's mine. Not mine. <laughs> it, that was a funny. It was a robot, a sentient robot. It was Johnny cool. Five. But he wasn't. But he was Johnny Five. But he wasn't alive. killing anybody. He was actually nice. <laughs> that and Ali Sheedy too. Yeah. So She's busy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and, then, and what was the Indian guy's name? Because he was the best um, part. My my Lloyd's are on fire for you. <laughs> yeah. I but love he, that guy. He was on. Um, he's a big time director now. Um, he does a oh, lot really? of stuff. Yeah. He was on my science project. Um, okay. Um, he's he he was only on a very few roles, but then he did a lot, a little bit of TV. But now he's doing directing, like like Peter Berg. That's where I learned my Indian accent. Yeah, was from that guy. Yeah, I mean he's a total you, white dude. I, right, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't even make sense. Wait, you're talking about Fisher Stevens? Yes, yeah. <laughs> he plays an Indian character yes. in that film. I yeah. forgot you about know, that. I am oh. not knowing what yeah. is going on here, <laughs> yeah. dude. Fisher Stevens <laughs> been in all sorts of stuff. Yeah, man. yeah. Now he's he's directed some pretty. Pretty good movies too. Anyways, back to Short Circuit. Now, now we're going. <laughs> yeah, Short Circuit was great. I'm gonna go to Star Trek um, Four: The Voyage Home. Okay. Um, that one came out. That was a that was a pretty big one for for Star Trek at that point because they oh. had didn't in Voyage Home they actually come to like m- our time our the yeah, well, eighties yeah, yeah the modern you know and and that one they show the date in that one you know just the way that it looked but the the filming on that one was still great. Um, they were on the Klingon um, was, bird of prey. Was the, well, hold on. Is this the was that the one, one with the sea, the whales? Yeah. Wait. Three was Search for Spock. Four was a voyage home, and they um, yeah yeah okay yeah so okay. yeah we're talking about when they go back in time to save the whales. Whales, yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. loves this one, and 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 I'll I'll come back around to this because I was going to talk about Star Trek too, um, but everyone loves the odd number ones, and everyone likes four for some reason. Yeah. I, I don't care for Cause, four because it's in the modern mm-hmm. times, and I think that's where a lot of people really. I'm gonna like be it. honest. Uh, yeah, Rathacon was cool. Yeah, Rathacon was way better. There you go. That's my Star Trek <laughs> list. Yeah, um, <laughs> that, I did like the J.J. Abrams movies. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. This one, this one, I think really caught on because it was but, modern times. Yeah, yeah, but people like this yeah. one. There's the scene where he he confronts like the punk on the bus or yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's it, it, <laughs> it's not necessarily for me, but. Um, is that your last one? Uh, I think I got one more. Um, it would be, man, I'm going to have to put this down um, and like really put an awesome one out there, Maximum Overdrive. Oh, uh, Ooh, That was Stephen, Stephen King's King. first mm-hmm. direct uh, d- director credit yep. for the movie and a soundtrack by ACDC. Emilio, Emilio Estevez. Estevez. Fuck. Yeah, dude. It was a badass I'm fucking half machine. Movie. You know who else was in that movie? Giancarlo Esposito. Yes. Um, very, very small role, but and, he was he was cool in it. And Yardley Yardley Smith. Yep. The, yep. the chick who does. She the, hardly did anything. She's Ex- the nagging wife. Yeah. Well, she, <laughs> no, she hardly did anything movie wise. Oh right, because right. she was on the Simpsons. And she She's was the voice of Lisa Simpson. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap! Yeah. Every time you see it, that's the one part that you remember the most. Well, no, the one part I remember the most, and I always thought was so funny, is when the baseball coach gets hit in the face with the soda yeah. can yeah. shooting yeah. out of the yeah. soda machine. He's like, I'm and the buying. kid, run, everyone, run! <laughs> <laughs> like, couldn't you just move to around the yeah. side yeah. of the now, machine? You didn't even have to go to the side. You could take a foot to the left or a foot to the right. Right, you're free. Yeah, yeah. And then the steamroller comes and the kid trips in yeah. the middle of the fucking Oh, field my God. And he gets crushed. <laughs> but I, um, in, in later years, I've, I've, I've actually listened to Stephen King and read articles to him talk about. He doesn't like, he doesn't think he no. did a good job on that. It was a cool movie. It still, it, it is a freaking yeah. cool movie, yeah. man. I don't care if you don't think Great he did concept. a good job or not. No. Um, the one guy who helped him was that actor. Let me look up his name real quick. You've seen him in a lot. Um he was the Commissioner Gordon in the Batman. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Pat something. Yeah, the older guy that he was. He was the guy that ran the truck stop, and he's all, "Oh, you see these stars? Yep. Come on, man." <laughs> yeah, he helped Stephen King a lot. He said, um, 
help them direct and help them block things. Pat Hingle is who oh, you're thinking about. Nice. Pat Hingle. He was the owner of the the rest the diner yep. room and stuff. Yeah. For the ex cons. <laughs> and you got the Green Goblin toy tr- the toy truck had the Green Goblin face yeah, on yeah. it from Marvel Comics.